In number 10, Robert Downey Jr. At this point, it's pretty common knowledge that RDJ had a history of drug addiction, but what most people don't realize is that his issues all began at six years old. His father was a filmmaker and drug addict who gave his young son a joint to smoke at the age of six. Downey claims that he was surrounded by drugs as a young child and often used drugs as a way to bond with his troubled father. He believed that when they did drugs together it was his father's way of expressing love for him in the only way that he knew how. He nearly ended his acting career though after being arrested several times for possession of cocaine, heroin, and marijuana use before spending a year in prison in 1999, which meant the cancellation of several acting jobs. Director Jodie Foster even caught him doing coke on the set of her movie called Home for the Holidays. She begged for him to get help, but Downey would continue to spiral out of control. After struggling even more with drug abuse between 2001 and 2003, Downey finally was able to kick the habit through a combination of the 12 step recovery program, meditation, yoga, and martial arts training. In number 9, Vanilla Ice. Way back in 1999, before Jon Stewart was the host of The Daily Show, he was hosting a program on the set of MTV called MTV's Lame 25. On the show, the host would typically make fun of different music videos that had already aired on MTV and then they would destroy the tape. I don't know why, it was just their thing to do. On one episode in particular, rapper Vanilla Ice came in at number 9 with his song Ice Ice Baby. The rapper was in the studio at the time of the criticisms and he was planned to take to the set with a baseball bat and break the tape of his own song as per MTV's request. However, things didn't exactly go as planned. The jokes and comments must have really started to bug Vanilla Ice because he didn't just break the tape, Vanilla Ice took that baseball bat to the entire set, smashing everything and scaring everyone in the process. Luckily, he was able to bounce back from this meltdown by reinventing himself as a DIY superstar on different home improvement networks. How ironic would it be though for MTV to call Vanilla Ice and have him build them a new set? That'd be pretty great. I'd love to see that. In number 8, Alec Baldwin. It is a well known fact that actor Alec Baldwin has gotten into trouble several times after his interactions with the paparazzi. There's no doubt that these creepy photographers do invade the personal space of celebrities, but that being said, violence has never made them leave you alone either. Baldwin has been at the center of several cases where he was accused and literally photographed physically attacking photographers. The first accusation was in 1995 when he reportedly punched a paparazzi so hard that he broke the man's nose. However, in all of these incidents, Baldwin was never charged. Baldwin had another crazy meltdown on an airplane after a flight attendant asked him to turn off his phone so that they could take off. The actor made a big stink and even tweeted more about his meltdown saying, flight attendant on American reamed me out for playing words with friends while we sat at the gate not moving. That is a meltdown indeed when it ends up on Twitter. In at number 7, Cher. Ok, serious question, does anyone know who Cher is? I mean she is really showing how out of touch she is with her constant Twitter meltdowns and odd use of emojis as punctuation. I'm sure she's very talented to have gotten that little blue check mark, but one thing's for sure she definitely doesn't know how Twitter works. She tweets out random things that look like if a pocket dial was a tweet, and sometimes she just says hi, and other times she just tells her fans about her technology freezing up because she's too much of a diva. Cher, if you're having issues with your iPad, you need to go to the Apple store. My favorite meltdown moment though was when she had to defend her tweets about Senator Ted Cruz. She says, sorry, had a meeting. Didn't need to know that. Regarding all caps on tweets about Ted Cruz, they weren't excitement, they were anger. Okay, well, maybe if you had used more emojis, we would have known that. Come on, Cher. In at number 6, Tom Cruise. It was the couch jump that truly rocked Hollywood and a side of the action hero Tom Cruise that we had never witnessed before. In short, it was a meltdown over passion for his newest love interest, Katie Holmes. At the time, Tom Cruise was one of the biggest celebrities in America and he was already an established leading man with roles such as Top Gun and Jerry Maguire under his belt. He was appearing on the Oprah Winfrey show though to promote his upcoming movie which was Steven Spielberg's remake of War of the Worlds. However, instead of staying on script to his promo material, he could not stop gushing over his new girlfriend. Within 50 minutes the interview, Tom had leapt onto Oprah's couch as Oprah struggled to find the words for his over the top infatuation. I think she just kept yelling, he's gone. You're gone. This guy's crazy. In the moment, it was this very heartwarming thing to see though, but in hindsight, people watching that clip, maybe through a GIF or just a series of photos, it looks like Tom is acting at a school for an interview, so by all accounts and without hearing the audience's reaction, this was categorized as one of Tom's biggest TV meltdowns. But he was just really happy. In at number 5, Jabbar Gaffney. Upon seeing these bizarre series of tweets from Washington Redskins wide receiver Jabbar Gaffney, even the Washington Post described it as a Twitter meltdown. I'm not even going to read them all out because they are definitely not safe for work. But let's just say he used a ton of foul language to get his points across. What happened was that Gaffney was going through a divorce and we only really knew that because he made it all public. Like, 
all of it. He tweeted about waking up on the day of his anniversary and not being able to find his soon-to-be ex-wife anywhere. He followed that up by saying he can't wait for the divorce to be finalized. He also must have been getting angry with the replies to those tweets because everything after that was about how he was now going to steal your girl and that if you see him, you should tell him what you were going to say to him in the comments to his face, which, by the way, do not do that. If you see this guy, do not approach. In number four, Russell Crowe. Back in 2005, Russell Crowe was in Australia to promote his film that he had coming out. Shortly after 4 o'clock in the morning, Russell was having a difficult time trying to call his wife. So with his room phone not working, he went down to the concierge to use theirs. Crow then got into an argument with the concierge, which led to him picking up the desk phone and throwing it out of anger and frustration. Unfortunately, in the process of doing this, the phone actually struck the hotel worker in the face. He was then arraigned on charges of second degree assault and fourth degree criminal possession of a weapon. By the way, the weapon was the phone that he threw. The Oscar winner then pled guilty and the judge gave him a conditional discharge which essentially means that he can't be arrested in Australia ever again. In at number three, Kevin Smith. After being kicked off of a Southwest Airlines flight, Kevin Smith went on an absolute Twitter tirade, which is really the only way to sum up what it was. Kevin tweeted out, Dear at Southwest Air, I know I'm fat, but was Captain Laysap really justified in throwing me off of a flight for which I was already seated? Come on, Kev. No one could possibly throw you. This tweet forced the airline into apology mode because, well, Kevin Smith has a ton of followers, so when he tweets something out like that, you can be damn sure Southwest was getting a lot of angry mob mentality tweets sent their way. Smith went on to say things like, want to tell me I'm too wide for the sky? Totally cool, but fair warning folks, if you look like me, you may be ejected from Southwest. Now I'm not defending Southwest Airlines booking guidelines for, as they say, customers of size, which outlines that if you can't lower both arms armrest when seated, you gotta go. I'm purely pointing out that maybe this wasn't the best way to handle the situation on both ends. In at number two, Britney Spears. The mid-2000s were certainly not kind to pop sensation Britney Spears. From a bitter divorce to having a very public meltdown, it was only a matter of time before she had her run-in with the law. In 2006, she was driving with her four-month-old son on her lap when the police pulled her over, which is very illegal, by the way. Yet, because she's Britney Spears, there wasn't even a fine. Then, just a year later, she was charged with a hit and run while also driving without a license. Initially, she was looking at a year in prison for this, but again, she ended up not even spending a minute behind bars. It really is a mystery how she was able to pull herself out of this downward spiral, but what's really concerning is how she managed to escape the law. Fame should definitely not exclude you from the repercussions of doing something illegal. Last but certainly not least, our number one spot, Michael Richards. Michael Richards is known for his role as Kramer on Seinfeld. He's funny on that show because he literally Literally had Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David writing for him, the two funniest people in the world. Although, when the show ended, Kramer thought that he could just transition into stand-up comedy and be just as funny. Unfortunately, when his set was not going well at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood, he completely lost his mind and just buried his career. Someone heckled him, I guess, and then he went on to a tirade by screaming racial slurs and attacking the audience. It, it was so bad that a large majority of the crowd just up and left the club in the middle of his act. He was never able to redeem himself after this racist rant, and it will serve is a stark reminder that Kramer was never cool. Every time I see this backdrop, I think about Kramer up. <laughs> In at number 10, Nicki Minaj. Let's start this point off by reading the tweet itself. I put my blood, sweat, and tears in writing a dope album only for Travis Scott to have Kylie Jenner post a tour pass telling people to come see her and Stormy. I'm actually laughing. Hashtag queen. Broke the record of being number one in 86 countries. Thank Jesus and thank you to my fans. Essentially, Nicki Minaj was blaming everyone for her record not doing well while also saying how well it did. Kind of like a female Donald Trump. After saying that the only reason Travis Scott could sell tickets was because of Kylie, she also took shots at Spotify and Drake for conspiring against her. A little over 15 minutes later, she tweets this. Spotify put Drake's face on every playlist but told me they'd have to teach me a lesson for playing my music 10 minutes earlier on Queen Radio. Even though they've been giving away my music for free for years and I am one of the top Spotify artists of all time. Sure you are. In at number 9, Lindsay Lohan. Who would have thought that Lindsay Lohan could bring together the United Kingdom through Twitter? Oh yeah, no one. No one thought that ever. However, kudos to her for trying. She tweets, I love the Shetlands, BBC News, thank goodness we have pure-hearted people on our side. Then about an hour later, she tweets out, workplace fatalities in the UK have reduced by half since European safety directives were introduced in 1996. Then came the tweet that made the entire UK laugh as a collective. Lohan tweeted, hashtag remain. Sorry, but Kettering, where are you and why is this woman at BBC News speaking on people rather than telling us what happens if UK leaves? Yes, that is 
an American actor, Lindsay Lohan, spouting off about another country's politics for which she knows nothing about. Great work, Lohan. Great work. I'm sure they were all waiting on your hot takes before making a decision. In at number 8, Heidi Montag. Alright, let's begin with the meltdown, shall we? In 2010, The Hill star Heidi Montag tweeted, P.S. I have no friends. The ones who are pretending to be friends or family are crazy, angry, broke, and bitter. This is why they haven't been in my life for years. LIARS, all caps, so you know she's being serious. For those of you who don't know, Heidi suddenly got a ton of plastic surgeries that drastically altered her appearance. Before this tweet, she had already been going off about her recent decisions, mainly because a lot of other castmates from the hills and even her family started to kind of distance themselves from her, which prompted this series of meltdown level tweets. She also would go on about how her family is trying to make money off of her, which only further isolated Montag from her friends and family. Kinda, you did it to yourself. In number seven, Nicolas Cage. Back in April of 2011, Academy Award winning actor Nick Cage was arrested in New Orleans on one count of domestic abuse and one count of disturbing the peace. According to the local police, Cage was witnessed arguing with his wife in front of their home around midnight. Police say that Cage grabbed his wife by her upper arm and dragged her towards their property. He then apparently began to strike cars in the immediate vicinity and even attempted to jump into a taxi when the police arrived. At that point, the police immediately observed that Cage was heavily intoxicated and so they ordered him out of the cab, which prompted Nick to start yelling. Cage allegedly started yelling why don't you just arrest me to the police? Which is exactly what happened next. However, even though Nick was taken into custody and charged, his wife apparently did not want him charged and said that there was no actual physical contact between them during the fight. Regardless, still a meltdown. In at number six, Victoria Jackson. When Obama had won re-election, conservatives around America were devastated. Actually, devastated maybe taking it too lightly. They full on had meltdowns online. Victoria Jackson was one of those Republicans that did not care for the result and so the SNL alumni began this Twitter tirade. She tweets, Thanks a lot, Christians, for not showing up. You disgust me. Then she says, The Democrat Party voted God out and replaced him with Romans 1. In the good versus evil battle, today, evil won. Okay, crazy pants. She went on like that for a few more tweets, with even more strange ones saying, America died and that she can't stop crying. Needless to say, she was mercilessly mocked for these tweets and ended up being kind of wrong. In at number five, Ted Nugent. AKA Uncle Ted, he initially became a celebrity when he was the lead guitarist for the Amboy Dukes. If you don't know that band, well, it's because they originally formed in 1963 and mainly played psychedelic rock. So at 71 years old, people hardly remember that's why he became a celebrity. Now he's mostly known for being a wild old nut that's a very conservative online. The Nuge really started to show his true colors after President Obama took office. This drove the Motor City Madman insane, leading to this celebrity Twitter meltdown moment. He starts by saying, So Obama still demands the hardest workers provide for the non-workers? Shared opportunities, my ass. He then, two minutes later, says, What subhuman varmint believes others must pay for their obesity, booze, cell phones, birth control, abortions, and lives? Varmint? Varmint, Ted? Your southern side is really showing. He caps it all off with another tweet saying, Good luck, America. You just voted for economic and spiritual suicide soulless fools. Wild stuff, and for whatever reason, I can't take someone seriously that makes that many spelling mistakes. Sorry, Nuge. In at number four, 50 Cent. 50 is without a doubt a rap megastar and business mogul, although that doesn't necessarily mean that everything he tweets out will be just as good. The diamond selling rapper has had many Twitter meltdowns in the past. The first most notable one though was in 2010. He tweets, okay, I'm in the studio and I think I just smoked crack and I'm crying because I'm not gonna stop. Can anyone help me? LOL. Um. Alright then, that's one way to deal with a drug problem. Two years later, he was using Twitter to just question his time on Earth and really frighten his fans. He starts his meltdown by saying, I have lost all of the faith in the team I'm on. I have nothing left to say. I will not be promoting my music. He would then take it even further saying, I'll be honest, I don't think I'm going to live much longer. That's why I started my Street King movement. Eight years later and he's doing just fine. If anything, he was using the threat of ending his life to get his music promoted, which is, if that's the case, that's really gross, 50. It number three, Michael Jackson. That is the king of pop hanging his baby blanket, yes, the baby's name was Blanket, out of a hotel window, Lion King style. This guy consistently buried his controversies by just manufacturing new ones. He was blasted by everyone online, calling him reckless and pointing out that he could have easily dropped his child in that moment. And here was his vague apology. Any child, try to kill them? Come on, stupid. And why would I put a scarf over the baby's face if I was trying to throw him off the balcony? 
We were waiting for thousands of fans down below. For someone that was called the king of pop, you would think that he would be able to keep his cool, although these moments clearly show a celebrity that was out of control, and in Michael's case, in desperate need of help. In at number two, Jose Canseco. Unfortunately for this one, the tweets themselves are no longer available, and for good reason. The disgraced, roid raging former baseball player is often pretty wild on Twitter, but while ranting about his ex-wife, he went way too far. After not liking some of the comments that his ex said to him over a phone call, Jose went on an all all day celebrity Twitter meltdown. Not only did he tweet out her phone number, but he tweeted openly about her favorite narcotic and tips on how to get her in the sack. All of those tweets were taken down the following day, but it was far too late for Jose Canseco. That was enough to not only do in whatever career he had, but essentially his entire reputation, which suffice it to say, wasn't the best to begin with. Last but not least in our number one spot, Lady Gaga. In 2013, Lady Gaga was sick and tired of what the press was saying about her, but the way she handled it was a little too cringy. In an attempt to own what her critics were saying about her, Gaga tweeted the following tirade. She begins with, Lady Gaga is fat now, then adds the hashtag, do what you want with my body, which coincidentally is a song of hers. Hmm. That would have been a perfect if she had to just come full stop right there, but she just kept going on and on and on with several more tweets and language far beyond what her fans ever expected. In at number 10, Chris Brown. Following a traffic accident where Chris Brown was accused by another driver of a hit and run, Brown decided his next best move was to defend himself on Twitter. First he says, it's not a hit and run if you get out of the car, exchange information who has no damage to either cars, this is really ridiculous. He then continues his Twitter meltdown by adding, I have a valid driver's license and I gave the woman the right info. She saw cameras and wanted to make a scene. Yes, because I'm sure that was her first thought after you rammed into her with your car. He then goes on to tweet again saying, She contacted the cops thinking of a payday from Chris Brown when I followed the proper procedures. I love that he starts speaking in the third person. That's how you know the wheels have truly come off. Also, he put that poor woman's license plate as his Twitter profile pic for a little while because, you know, doxing people really helps your case. Don't worry Chris, we all know that even after you hit someone, your fans will still think you're innocent. In at number 9, Bow Wow. Not to go back to Chris Brown again, but it was Lil Bow Wow that threw him under the bus with this tweet. Bow Wow says, I'm f***ed up, oh damn, why I drive the Lambo? Chris might have to drive after next spot. Eh, not so sure he should be your first pick. Maybe call a taxi? You know, like a normal person would. But Bow Wow is literally tweeting out how he was about to drive drunk on his Twitter feed. I mean, what a time to be alive. I miss when he was just Lil Bow Wow from Like Mike. Now, clearly this did not come without backlash and soon we had a hungover Bow Wow tweeting his regrets. Apologize for that tweet, it was stupid and immature. Not a way I want to kick my hashtag 2010 year off. I got too much good stuff lined up, my bad. You know what, good on him. The last thing we would have wanted was him messing up his chances at starring in the movie Lottery Ticket. In at number 8, Perez Hilton. The queen of all media himself had a crazy Twitter meltdown back in 2009 when he got into a bit of a scuffle with Black Eyed Peas member Will I Am. <laughs> Yo, that's Perez! That's Perez! Perez Hilton, being his usual disruptive self, decided to take a moment to cuss out Will I Am and say some pretty nasty stuff to him. He then started tweeting, I was assaulted by Will I Am of the Black Eyed Peas and his security guards. I am bleeding. Please, I need to file a police report. No joke. Okay, well, Perez, if someone assaults you and you're bleeding, common sense would dictate that you would, oh, I don't know, call 911. You can't rant on Twitter and hope that the local authorities are going to see it and hit up your mentions. What universe is this guy living in? I I mean, Will even got involved and made a video in response to what Perez had been tweeting about, and I mean, he should thank him for that. It's the most clouded he's gotten in a while. I hit you, Perez? Come on, dude. I didn't hit you. I told you that. I didn't like the fact that you disrespected us. In at number seven, Adam Richmond. Adam was once the host of Travel Network's Man Vs. Food, although after his social media meltdown in 2014, he was replaced by the network real quick. It first started on Instagram when Adam posted about his recent weight loss saying, had ordered this suit from Seville Row Taylor over a year ago, think I'm gonna need to take it in a little, and then he uses the hashtag Thinspiration to cap it all off. What Adam was unaware of was how mad his followers were about to get from just seeing him use that hashtag. People went in on him 
him and berated the TV host for not knowing that the hashtag was being used by many to promote anorexia and unhealthy eating habits. Adam though could have been much more chill in his response, but instead he just hit back 10 times harder. He began calling his own fans a number of expletives and then even going as far as personally DMing his haters on Twitter just to take it a step further. In at number six, Gary Busey. Gary is an actual nut job. That being said, he was a very prolific actor. He's appeared in over 150 films such as Lethal Weapon, Predator 2, and Point Break. So in other words, he was big in the 90s. Now, with the age of the internet, Busey is trying to hang on to the times and stay relevant. Although much like Cher, no one really understands what he's tweeting about. Thankfully, he's been sober for years now, but still when you read these tweets, you gotta wonder, is he really sober? I mean, look at this tweet. Who invented the balloon? I don't know, Gary. Google it. Here's another great one. When you go to which mountain, don't fall in love. Okay. <laughs> Bit of a cautionary tale, I guess. That's kind of helpful. Here's another one. If you have to fart, fart quickly, but keep your energy up. Buseyism for fart, feeling erectile transmission. Okay, Gary, that's enough for one day. Oh, oh, oh wait, whoa, we got one more. I'm a cartoon that talks. Sure you are, Gary. Okay, now back to your padded cell. The doctor will be with you shortly. In number five, David Hasselhoff. We all remember David Hasselhoff from his time on Baywatch, but in 2007, it seemed as though the Hoff had hit rock bottom. The weird part was that his daughter apparently filmed the whole debacle that ended up airing on the news. In the video, David was clearly drunk and apparently a little hungry as he lay shirtless on the floor with his eyes beginning to shut. He does his best to pick apart a burger and feed it to himself, but the whole time he's doing this, Dave is just babbling in a drunken tone while falling over onto his food. In the video, you can actually hear his daughter Taylor begging him to to grow up and even say, you need to promise me you're not going to get alcohol tonight, okay? Apparently Hasselhoff had asked his kids to film him anytime he falls off the wagon, I guess so that he can look back on it with shame and get his house in order. What a weird thing to make your kids do. In at number four, Courtney Love. Speaking of taking things too far on Twitter, Courtney Love is the prime example of this. She is truly off her rocker. I guess Lana Del Rey had done a cover of Nirvana's Heart Shaped Box and Courtney wanted to set the record straight, even though no one asked her to. First of all, she at mentions both Lana and Brian Adams before saying, Brian, has anyone told Lana what Heart Shaped Box is about? At Lana Del Rey again, you do know the song is about my vagina, right? Throw down your umbilical noose so I can climb right back? Um, um is right. That is probably the craziest thing that I've ever heard. But wait, let's not forget, there is one last Twitter meltdown moment where she says, so um, next time you sing it, think about my vagina, will you? Lol, what is wrong with her? Who says that? Like, think about my, good, Courtney, no, just no. Someone take her off Twitter now. In at number three, Tyrese. Now, although this mainly took place on Instagram and Instagram Live, I had to include it in the list because this meltdown was just heartbreaking to watch. Tyrese had found himself in the middle of a brutal custody battle with his ex-wife over their 10-year-old daughter. He took to social media, though, to share all of this. He admitted that Will Smith gave him $5 million to pay for his legal fees that Will Smith would later deny, and then his meltdown started to take a wrong turn. For whatever reason, he zeroed in on Dwayne The Rock Johnson and criticized him for ignoring his text messages. In his post, he said, if you move forward with that Hobbs movie, you will have purposely ignored the heart to heart moment we had in my sprinter. I don't want to hear from you until you remember what we talked about. I'm on your timeline because you're not responding to my text messages. Fast family is just that, a family. We don't fly solo. So clearly he was upset that The Rock wouldn't text him back, but getting mad that you weren't included in his movie is kind of selfish, dude. In at number two, Alec Baldwin. I feel like I already trashed Alec Baldwin pretty hard on a different video, but hey, who says I can't do it again? I mean, he keeps saying crazy stuff on Twitter, so what's stopping me? Much like Kevin Smith, Alec too has had his fair share of troubling experiences while flying. He tweets out first, flight attendant on American reamed me out for playing words with friends while we sat at the gate not moving. Hashtag no wonder American air is bankrupt. I love when people do massive hashtags like that. Like who do you think is searching for that tag? He goes on to say, United Airlines should buy words with friends, but oddly 30 Rock plays in flight on American. Then in another tweet he says, hashtag there's always United, last flight with American, where retired Catholic school gym teachers from the 1950s find jobs as flight attendants. That that is so specific. Why, why, Alec? Just why? Okay, 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 okay. One last Twitter meltdown for Alec Baldwin. Now on the three o'clock American flight, the flight attendants already look smarter. Um, I thought you just said that this was the last time you fly with American, and now he's back on the flight. I, I don't even know. 
on to the next one. Last but not least in our number one spot, Miley Cyrus. It's been a long time since Miley Cyrus was with Disney and ever since becoming a pop star in her own right, she has been adamant about proving her lack of innocence. Again, nobody asked for this. She says, I lost a massive Walmart deal at 17 for ripping a bong. Then she just goes off in her own replies like, when did Twitter turn into celebrities confessing their sins? Like, go to church for that. She then adds, I got kicked off of Hotel Transylvania for buying Liam a p cake for his birthday and l***ing it. Um, alrighty then. I swung on a wrecking ball naked. <laughs> okay. And one last one because there's so many to choose from. There are probably more nudes of me on the internet than maybe any woman in history. Well, that morphed into a humble brag real quick. 